Okay, everybody, good morning. I am gonna show you guys how I trim this fruit bowl. Um, I believe it's from one of my fruit bowl videos. I always forget to show you guys the trimming portion. Um, so what are your goals? Your goals are always, always with anything you're making, is to indicate to the viewer on the outside what's going on on the inside. So if your bowl is round on the inside, your bowl should be round on the outside. Now, big mistakes people always make is they allow the clay that's been left over to dictate where their foot's gonna go. And usually that clay that's left over from when you threw it is because you needed the support of the walls, but it doesn't necessarily mean that your foot should go there. Can your foot go there? Yes, but that's not going to really give you that round air that will sit under the wall of your pot that will make it look like it's lifted off the table. So our foot goes where it starts to change direction. So if it's going straight and then it curves, I really prefer to do it right underneath the curve. So if my, it changes direction here, maybe a little hard to see in the video because it's so well thrown, it's such a smooth bottom, but a bum. <laughs> the inside, outside of my foot is gonna go all the way in here. And that's gonna give me that nice curve of air underneath that's gonna lift the bowl off the table. I always make my foot about a half an inch thick and I make it a little thicker. And I'm gonna to talk to you guys why, why as I start to trim the inside. So I'm gonna do it about three quarters of the way in and that's gonna mark off. And then where do I start trimming the outside? Where it starts to get thick, right around here. And you're like, wow, that's not very round over here. But what I cared about when I was throwing it, if you watch my video, was the inside. Now, although my wheel is very filthy here, um, I always trim directly on my wheel head. Um, and there are a couple of reasons. It will help me see the circles on the wheel that's gonna help me center it. It also allows the clay to stick. I am not a fan of all of the different tools. If your pot is round, um, I don't see why you can't just center it without all the things. But yes, a lot of people love the grips and all those things. Um, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna use those circles now, I don't know if you guys have ever seen my way of trimming. Um, I trim like a record player. So I don't tap. Um, I don't hold my tool on the side. Tapping, I think, is really hard. Holding the tool on the side is, if your pot's a little oval and it warped, um, it's gonna hit in two spots. So that, to me, is difficult. So I draw circles. I wake my, make my wheel go relatively quickly, and I tap down, and I draw a circle. And now that circle's clearly not in the middle, so I move it towards the short side. So this is about two and a half inches, this is about one and a half. I'm gonna move it towards that one and a half. And now I'm gonna draw another circle, but I'm gonna do it outside. Don't do it where the foot's gonna be. So I do it right around the edge. I just drop down. Don't worry about this, the going fast. Um, the this, this centripetal force makes it stick. And then I'm gonna measure a little bit here, and it looks like I'm, I'm right about there. So a lot of mistakes people do is they'll put their pin tool down and then start. That's gonna create an oval or they go too slow and that's also gonna create an oval. So you wanna directly just tap down just like this. And I'm gonna go ahead and draw the foot so you can see. So I go ahead and I choose that line that I choose, chose a little off and that other line. See, it's much easier to do when it's going quickly. And I'll tend to use my pinky here. So I'm just gonna shade in what I wanna get rid of. Very often, some people will um, not see this correctly and they'll actually trim away the foot. We wanna leave the foot. So for my students and my members, I'll literally draw and shade in what needs to be removed. It also looks kinda cool and it's fun to do. So what that does is it clearly says, this is not where you're gonna trim. Okay, so the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my quote unquote trimming clay. My studio does often provide it. It's usually crappy reclaimed clay. Now, as your pot gets taller, you wanna make these lugs of clay taller as well. And when we, we put them on, we wanna make them look nice. If your pot's sort of soft on the side and you just use a ha -ha piece of clay, it's gonna push right into it. So I'm gonna go ahead and put that, and I wanna push it down onto the bat. So by pushing down on the bat, I'm literally creating a clamp of that other clay that is just riding up the side of it. I'm a big fan of three. Three is a strong number. You don't have to go all the way around. You just want to get a real good grip. 
as you can see, I only push down on half of the lug of clay. If I push all the way in here, then there's gonna be no grip there. So I wanna make sure that this rides up the side of the clay. Now we wanna start trimming. So because I wanna take off a big piece, I'm gonna use my big tool. My arms are close, my elbows are pulling back. If your elbows are not tightly on your thighs, you're gonna go like this. So our wheel's going fast. I have my hands attached. My elbows are pushing back and into my body. My left hand is kind of floating on top there. And I'm gonna go ahead and put um, my finger here. And I'm not gonna just drag it. I wanna get rid of all the extra pieces. So wait, I first until I start to hit pieces of clay and I have the clay meet the tool. Now I'm just gonna go crazy. And I wanna create a 45 degree angle from that foot that I created, that line on the outside and the bottom of the bowl where I decided that it started to become thick. Now, can you trim down here? I mean, you physically can. Am I a fan of it? No, I think you're supposed to throw that pot well. As I always say, we're not carving a piece of pot out of a block of clay. We're throwing it and then we're trimming off the excess to finesse it. So see the big tool will go ahead and take off the big chunks in big pieces. And I'm holding it with my um, wrist doing most of the work as if I'm cutting a really tough piece of meat. Okay, so now that I've created sort of this, this got rid of most of this and I've got sort of the slope, now I wanna create that foot. Now by getting rid of all of this, I've now allowed it for me to take my square tool and go straight down without any anything interfering here. So we're gonna go ahead and do that. So my wheel's going fast again, my hand's on top, my pinky is here, my hands are attached, my elbows are pulled back. I push my index finger up against that tool. What that's gonna do is it's gonna guide it down so that it doesn't go sliding around. I'm just gonna go straight down. Now, if you can't get at least three eighths of an inch of a foot, or a quarter of an inch, then there's no reason to have a foot. That foot is serving absolutely no purpose. You want that foot to serve a couple of different reasons. You wanna be able to hold it if you're gonna glaze. You wanna be able to give it a real definitive safety line of where the glaze isn't supposed to be. And you want a really good pedestal that picks that up. If you do not have that much clay, don't put a foot for foot's sake. Make sure that you have the ability to really get yourself a foot. So you can see I just sort of went straight down into that. I created this right angle with my squared off tool. Now, a lot of people right now will make the mistake of just sort of smoothing this out. But the truth is, your bowl is not straight on the bottom here. It's rounded. So don't let this clay fool you, okay? So now I'm gonna use the small loop tool, pinky, elbows, hands, and I wanna get rid of the small bits. And I'm holding it like a pencil because I'm doing more detailed work. And I'm just sort of rounding that out. And I'm reminiscing about what the inside of my pot looks like. I know that it's a fruit bowl, so I know it is a little straight on the bottom so those apples can sit there. But I also know it was a pretty smooth curve. So that's what I'm sort of aiming for. Now often I'll have to go back and reinforce that sort of right angle that I created. Because I want, I want the foot to look like if I just took it off, this would just be continuous. So I don't want that little bit of a curve. And that little bit of a curve really changes um, the profile of your pot. And I'll go back in here. And let's say you don't like these lines. Um, you can go back with the bigger tool. Take a spoon and burnish it. I am not a fan of a sponge. The sponge will take away the clay and leave the grog. And in the end, it'll be rougher than when you uh, when you first started. You ever notice the inside of your bowls tends to be a little groggy? 
the inside of your cylinders are groggy too, but you don't notice it as much because when you're compressing your floor, you're getting rid of the clay. A little pro tip for you. So I'm a fan of a rubber rib, a spoon for your finger. No water added. I never ever have water near me when I'm trimming. No reason. Now what I'm getting here is that really great curve that's gonna tell the viewer that this is a bowl, not a cylinder that accidentally turned into a bowl. All right, so now I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna get rid of the inside. And notice I now see what I wanna get rid of. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use the squared off edge. And what I'm doing is I'm not going completely perpendicular. This is not the blade, this is the blade. So I angle it just a little bit. Elbows, pinky, hand, hand, fast wheel. I'm just gonna start to dig in. And I'm going from the right to the left, not all the way, you don't wanna commit yet. Just break that dry skin that's been sitting there while your pot was drying. My left index finger is pushing against that tool to make sure it doesn't go where it wants. And now my tool will go a little more perpendicular so that I can kind of get that smooth bottom. I don't necessarily need the, the lines unless you want it. Now that little nipple in the middle is always really hard. Um, you almost need like a really tiny tool to get in there. I'll start in the middle at this point with the square edge and just sort of get rid of it um, from the top to the bottom. And then I'm just gonna sort of go across. Again, biggest mistake you can make, have your wheelie going too slow. Visualize a jackhammer. A jackhammer goes down into the ground only because it's going fast. If it went slow, it would sort of bounce around. Now, how deep do you go? Well, hopefully, if you put a foot on your pot, you have enough clay to go the same distance as you did the outside. Again, you want this to come off and be continuous. So you want this inside here to kind of line up with this. You can go ahead and listen to it by sound. Um, it's usually a little bit of a higher pitch if it's thin. I always tell everybody if you tap it like this and your finger goes through, congratulations, you have a planter. So as I said, I made my um, foot a little wider and I said I would explain why later and this is why. So when I do the inside of my foot, I tend to bevel the inside. I find it easier to put wax on a beveled edge than a right angle. When you put wax on a right angle, you end up not getting in here and then there's glaze in there. So if I bevel it, I can get my brush right in there. So at this point, I'm gonna bevel my edge, but what I did was I reduced the width of my foot. Now I'm just using my finger or you can use the side of your tool to push down sort of that thing on the edge. And I also bevel just slightly the outside foot. Things that are super sharp and pointy tend to uh, chip really easily. So why not just get rid of those sharp pointy areas? So I'll put my head to the side. You may not be able to see me do that. I'm just gonna kind of get rid of a little bit more of this sort of bump that I left here. Again, I really love um, a good right angle. Um, I lost my tool. Right here. Sometimes I'll even um, have the foot flare out. That's just a design thing I'll tend to do. Okay, and then at this point, I feel like it's a pot. I'm feeling like I have, I have successfully told the outside viewer what's going on on the inside. So I don't have a pointy bowl on the inside. It's saying that it's a fruit bowl on the inside because my outside is round. I feel like I've got an even consistent, it's a little thin here. But I think it's good. So I'm gonna carefully roll these away, right? And crumple them up, because I can probably get one or two more uses out of that. I just wanna show you guys the foot. 
You can see the inside of my foot. See, I've got sort of that angle there. I beveled the edge. If I was to take this off, whole thing off, this should consistently line up with this. Um, I always make my foot about this wide, no matter what, um, no matter how tall or wide that my foot, is, my pot is. Okay, here we go. So there we go, we've got um, our bowl with a foot that's high enough for me to get a good grip when I'm trimming. It's enough of a safety zone that when I wax that, I'll be able to have the glaze go all the way there and hopefully not a, it's not a runner, one with a low melting temperature and it'll run off. I think that I have successfully created air underneath here so again, a lot of people make a mistake, or not a mistake, but a design choice to have the foot all the way out here because that's where they left their clay. What that's gonna do is that's gonna eliminate this, this, this lifting air. So if your pot is behind a dark background or a colored background, that negative space is really gonna lift the pot off of the table. And I think that that's what's super important. So there you go, that's how I trim a bowl Sorry, the inside is round, the outside is round. So I've successfully told the viewer here what the inside's gonna be doing on the inside. I've got two apples, three apples, four apples, probably about five apples in there. Maybe the small honey crisps from Trader Joe's. I'm gonna go ahead and sign my pot right down here because I don't have a stamper. Um, and that's it, gonna call it a pot. So go ahead um, and follow me and subscribe and take a look at our Instagram on um, on your little device there. It is at Mud Clay Studio NJ, and my members work is call it a pot with underscores in between. See you soon.